In the last lecture, we created our very first custom attribute directive. So we created this set background directive, which changes the background color of an HTML element or a component to green when we use it on that HTML element or that component, right? Now here, we are using this native element property of the element ref to manipulate the DOM. And this native element property contains a reference to the underlying DOM object. So this gives us a direct access to the DOM by passing the Angular. Now there is nothing wrong with this approach, but it is not advisable to access the DOM element directly using native element. And there are several reasons for that. First of all, Angular keeps the component and the view in sync using templates, data binding and change detection. And all of them are bypassed when we update the DOM directly. Also, DOM manipulation works only in browsers. You will not be able to use the app in other platforms like in web worker, in server or in a desktop or mobile app. That's because there is no browser present there, right? And DOM APIs do not sanitize the data. And that's why it is possible to inject a script, thereby opening our app an easy target for XSS injection attack. And because of these reasons, accessing the DOM element directly using native element property is not advisable. So in this lecture, I will show you a better way of accessing the DOM element. And that is by using renderer. Renderer allows us to manipulate the DOM without accessing the DOM elements directly. It provides a layer of abstraction between the DOM element and the component code. In this lecture, let's learn how to use renderer to manipulate the DOM without accessing the DOM elements directly. For that, let's go ahead and let's create a new directive. And this time, let's create this directive using Angular CLI. So let's open VS Code built-in terminal. Now I want to create this directive inside this custom directive folder. So first we need to move to this folder. For that we can use cd command. Then we want to go to source folder. From the source folder we want to go to app folder. And from the app folder we want to go to custom directive folder. And inside this folder we want to create a new directive. Now to create a new directive we can use ng generate command. And here we want to generate a directive. And let's call this directive highlight. Okay, let's press enter and it should create a directive for us. So in the custom directive folder, you can see this highlight directive has been created. Let's remove this spec.ts file. We don't need it for now. Okay, let's go to this highlight directive. So here you can see in this file, a class called highlight directive has been created and it has been decorated with a directive decorator. And the selector for this directive is app highlight, which is wrapped within square brackets because we want to use this directive as an HTML attribute, right? And since we have created this directive using Angular CLI, this class has been automatically registered in the app modules file, as you can see here. All right, now let's go to highlight directive here. Now in the last lecture, we learned that whenever we use an attribute directive on an HTML element or a component, we receive that HTML element or component as an argument for that constructor. So when we will use this app highlight directive on any HTML element, we will receive that HTML element as an argument for this constructor. So here let's specify a parameter. Let's call it element and it is going to be of type element ref. And in order to use this element ref, we also need to import it from Angular Co. Then this constructor is also going to receive another parameter, which is renderer. Now you can name this parameter anything, but the type of this parameter is going to be renderer2. And in order to use this renderer2, we also need to import it from Angular Co. Now this renderer2 is a class which allows us to manipulate the DOM elements without accessing the DOM directly. All right. Now for this class, let's specify ng on init method. Okay. And let's implement its interface as well. 
and the interface name is on init all right now inside this ng on init method we want to access this renderer and then we want to set the background color of this element to red now this element and this renderer are the parameters of this constructor that means they are not accessible outside of this constructor. They are local to this constructor. Now, in order to make these parameters available outside of this constructor, what we can do is we can use this private keyword in front of these parameters. So when we use a private keyword in front of a parameter, behind the scenes, Angular creates a private property with that parameter name. And then that private property can be accessed anywhere in the class. So here, Angular will create a private property called element and another private property called renderer for this highlight directive class. And those properties can be accessed anywhere inside this class. Now we want to access that property inside this ng on init. So here, let's access the renderer property. This renderer provides us with several methods which we can use to set the CSS style for an HTML element or add a CSS class to an HTML element, or we can also set some attribute for that HTML element. So let's start by understanding how to set a CSS style for an HTML element using renderer. So on this renderer, we have a method called set style. And this set style method we use to set a CSS style for an HTML element or a component. Now, the first parameter of this set style method is the element for which we want to set the CSS style and we are receiving that element inside this element parameter and since we have used a private in front of it a private property called element will be created and that will be assigned with this element parameter so let's access that element parameter I mean that element property using this keyword and since it is of type element ref it is going to have a native element property which is going to store the actual HTML element. Then the second parameter is the CSS style which we want to set. Here we want to set the background color. And the third parameter is the value for that CSS style. So we want to set the background color to red. And then this set style also has a fourth op optional parameter which we can use to set some flags. But we are not going to do that. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to appcomponent.html. Let's copy this div and let's paste it here. Let's remove the class and this set background directive from this div. Okay, and let's use this app highlight directive on this div element. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And you will notice that a div has been created and the background color of that div has changed to red. And this is because we have used this app highlight directive on this div. And this app highlight directive will change the background color of the HTML element to red on which we have used it. So in this way, you can use this renderer to manipulate the DOM without accessing the DOM elements directly. And this is the use of renderer. Now remember that the type of renderer is renderer2. Alright, so here we learned how to set a CSS style using renderer for an HTML element. Now let's see how to add a CSS class to an HTML element. So again, let's use this renderer property. And on that renderer, let's use add class method. Now to this add class method, the first parameter is again the element for which we want to set the CSS class. So again, we want to set the CSS class for this element which we are receiving inside this element parameter. So let's copy that. Then we need to specify the class name. So let's go to appcomponent.css file and from here, let's copy this class name and let's use it here. Okay, with this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page and you will notice that that class has been applied on this development. So basically in that class, we are setting the margin and the padding for the 
element okay so in this way you can also add css class using renderer now you can also set an attribute directly on html element using renderer let's see that so again let's access this renderer property and now we want to set an attribute for that we have a method called set attribute then the first argument for the set attribute method is the element for which you want to set the attribute so again we want to set the attribute for this same html element which we are going to receive for this element parameter so this element is of type element ref and it is going to have this native element property so we want to set an attribute for that element then you have to specify the attribute name so let's say here we want to set the title for that element then you have to specify the value so here let's say this is example div okay so this is going to be the title with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and you will notice that when i hover over this div it shows a title as you can see here you can see it is showing this title this is example div so in this way you can also set an attribute for an html element using renderer and there are also other useful methods available on this renderer2 class all right so remember that renderer2 allows us to manipulate the dom elements without accessing the dom directly so it provides a layer of abstraction between the dom element and the component code this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.